You're listening to To Hatch a Pod with Key Budge, Corey Costello, and Greg Garrett. Well, welcome to another episode of To Hatch a Pod, the City of Tehachapi's official podcast. Greg Garrett, Corey Costello, I'm Key Budge. In studio, we've got a special guest, Andrew Norton. He's our engineering department. Andrew, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Welcome back to the show because this is your second time. It is. Really? He's in a, he's in a two-time guest, huh? He is. All right. You and uh, Senator Grove. You're so we've company. asked him back, so it must, things must be going well. He's the uh, Andrew is the assistant engineer for the city of Tatchby, and he makes things happen in our city for projects. And that's what we're going to talk about today, right? Projects. That's it. We've got uh, a few things that are going on right now. One that's wrapping up, one that's, boy, just kind of, I don't know if it, we're saying good, just started, or it, it's, it's well underway. And then we've got another one that'll be breaking ground sometime soon. So Andrew, why don't we talk about the one that just wrapped up? Uh, that's got a couple of things left, but basically all the the heavy lifting has been done. Sure, sure. We're uh, completing construction on the Antelope Run Bike Path Extension Project. It's an additional leg to our our bike path network that ties in some Kern County regional bike paths into our more local smaller bike paths. It also includes an eight-stall parking lot to allow families who want to come and bike on the path or use the facilities so it, it provides safe parking as well so antelope run that's a that's attached to cummings county water district storm drain network that goes basically from highline going down north towards to boulevard so i know walmart has paved some of that with their money which was to boulevard to the, the valley intersection there at sonic and then with the partnership we had before, we had paved some of it from Sonic going south, connecting to the Alta Estates. But this project is actually going to connect it to the Highline area, which is going to be really nice for walkers, for bikers, for runners. So it's, it's a really cool connection to, in addition, the Freedom Trail out in the Golden Hills area. So we're really creating a network in town, in this community, that's really quite amazing. Yeah, absolutely. As, as we do these little connections and connect, hopefully more regional and get some of these regionals to connect. I mean, they're, they're not huge projects in themselves, but once this net, as this network continues to build out, it should be something fairly spectacular right. and noteworthy for and sure. And this is all because a couple of years ago, several years ago, the city of Tatchby recognized the need for a bicycle master plan, which we didn't have. Mm-hmm. And so we were not able to uh, apply for or receive grants through Caltrans or the federal government for that network. So we put the bike plan together and uh, voila, we're creating this network. So people have the ability to bike to work if you wanted to, if you had that ability, or you can just walk in the evenings with your family. I know my wife and I have had, we've talked, we've walked several times and it's just an amazing experience to slow down and be able to exercise and walk through nature. Andrew, you're out on this bike path quite often. I know we talk about it. You you go out with your nephew. So tell us a little bit about the conditions out there. And you've got a young nephew that you're out there cycling with. So, you know, as someone who actually uses it, what's your perspective on that part of our trail system? It, it's great. It's really safe. There's three three rail fence on both sides of the trail. So it's it's really family friendly, especially for young kids who are learning how to bicycle and, and, and progressing in skills. There's some a couple hills both up and down. They're they're nothing aggressive. They're very mellow. And and so it really is a family orientated fun go stretch your legs or go go pedal with a with a relative. Yeah, I think some of this we talked about a little bit. We get a lot of these active transportation grants. And I think people sometimes get confused because they think, well, you're spending money and building another bike path. You could have paved a road. But again, that's one of those things that's not how it works. Uh, so I think the fact that we have the master plan, like Greg pointed out, puts us in, because the state basically releases grants for bike paths is what is happening with these grants. And the fact that we have a master plan opens us up for opportunity to to fund these projects and, and, and take advantage of some of that tax money coming back to the community. And I know the local Recreation Parks District, they utilize it for programs too. Their mm-hmm. runs, 5K runs, 10K runs, you yeah. know, all kinds of really neat things going on there. Yeah, and the beauty about the Bicycle Master Plan kind of t- tying in with a- ATP is the Bicycle Master Plan's specific enough but then general enough to give us some flexibility. Oh, it kind of needs to go in this area. Or, you know, they say, oh, connector to Highline. And 
and it's up to us to kind of find exactly what fits the community to be the connector to Highline. And in this instance, it was the TCCWD drainage easement that we then paved and, and put three rail fence around. And the, the beauty about our particular situation is not all of it is road adjacent. A lot mm-hmm. of times in a lot of communities, they put their bike paths directly off the shoulder of a road, which isn't, it's great service to provide to commuters, but it's not always recreation friendly. Yeah. Whereas what we're providing is something very recreation. Well, even on that stretch of road right there, cause I've received calls about that stretch of road on Tucker and, and someone pointing out, well, you need to have, there's no bike path and there's no safe walking lane on that area from Tuck, Cherry Lane, basically to Highline. And I point out, well, there's Antelope Run right there that'll get you. Now, it won't take you directly in line, but it's its own bicycle path, essentially, for people walking. And, and if they need to walk up to, for some reason, to Highline from Tucker, Cherry Lane, they can use the bike path. A lot safer than having an adjacent bike path right next to moving traffic. Yeah, absolutely. Same for grocery shopping. Same for all of these is is now the Antelope Run runs parallel to Tucker from the entire city limits, mm-hmm. from Tatchby Boulevard to Highline. And, you know, if you're somewhere and, and need to jump on the bike path to get to Walmart or, or the grocery stores, then it's it's safe and protected. Mm-hmm. So if you lived in the Alta States and wanted to go to Walmart, for instance, to shop, you could actually use this bike path from end to end, back and, and forth, 100%. And, yeah, 100% bike, walking, any that's, of the above. and That's great. And you're relatively protected, as I said. Mm-hmm. There's three rail fence on most of it, and mm-hmm. you're definitely not going to get lost. Very cool. And I, uh, I know that you're working with our public works department. We received about a million dollar grant for trees, mm-hmm. and the Antelope Run is a portion of that. So we're designing and we'll be uh, planting trees with irrigation sometime in the fall of twenty. This year. This year, okay. And so we'll be seeing uh, some nice enhancements for landscaping and trees. Sure. Yeah. The urban greening grant was just under a million dollars and it's going to allow us to plant trees along the bike path on Tatchby Boulevard, the bike path on Valley Boulevard, the Curry median um, south of Tompkins to Highline, and also along Antelope Run. That's going to be so cool. I can't wait. Yeah. That's been, that's people have asked about, especially the Curry medians for years, you know, what's going on, what's going on. So that's, that's going to be fun to have that. It's because it's an entry point to the city. You come off a Highline, right into the city limits you've got the curry medians that right now are just kind of blank and so this is going to be really cool to have vegetation and and trees and stuff planted along that not to mention all the other areas included in this grant yeah absolutely the grant was based on carbon sequestration so it's really focused on tree planting and and the pounds of carbon that those trees themselves sequester but i think it's it's using carbon tax see and this is important to point out because uh, what you just talked about you've you got just this... read my mind i'm thinking okay where's it? this is going way <laughs> technical no but no that's it's... the way the yes. federal and state government work with money because folks right? think you just need to, oh we need to go get a grant to plant some trees well yes we can but then andrew's got to prove the car- the carbon mm-hmm. emissions reduction in order to get that grant and actually execute that grant it's not just as simple as oh there's a bunch of money out there and go go get this grant and just go do this like it takes a lot of stuff including you know, calculating carbon in order to make this work. Sure, of course. And I mean, that's that's where some of this stuff gets, uh, as you said, technical and, and mildly frustrating because not only is it... <laughs> mildly is it frustrating? Mildly We've been working frustrating. on this for two and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, not only is it the carbon sequestration, it's being competitive. So now you've got to yeah. prove that you can, yeah. you know, take the same amount of funding and, and sequester more carbon yeah. than, than perhaps another city vying for the same number of trees. And so it's... It's an iterative process where you've got to go and refine and and kind of punch up your application to be competitive yeah. and still deliver a product at the end. And it's so gratifying though because you know we all live here, we work here, and to see development with bike paths or with with trees, you know, all the different things that really make a nice, well-rounded community. Because when you you, you go to communities and you drive through, you drive in, you look at the city streets, right? Are they clean? Uh, is the grass mode, you know, all of the different elements. And you have a good feeling about that, that community. When I say Napa Valley, you think of something. Mm-hmm. When I say Blythe, you think of something. Mm-hmm. When I say Tehachapi, you think of something, right? And you want people to, that live here to have a lot of pride. We already have a lot of pride. The Tehachapi Warriors, very prideful. And uh, we're prideful of our town. And we want to keep, keep moving in that positive direction. We've got another safety project, one that is consuming a lot of your time, I know. 
uh, this rail corridor safety project. This is a big deal. This is a lot of work that's gone into it, uh, you know, from your department, just getting it to the point where before we even break ground, and now that we've broken ground, you've got to work with other entities that we don't normally work with. So what's what's that project? Sure. Like for you? So the the rail corridor project is cross, uh, connecting the three railroad crossings, the south and north sides of town together. And so it'll be sidewalk, handrails over the railroad crossings where there currently are none. And a, a lot of the time has been spent coordinating with Union Pacific and the contractor and making sure that all all the teams are are playing together and on, and on the same page. And so the three crossings are downtown Tehachapi, of course, Green Street, yep. Hayes, and then Denison over Denison. on the east end. Correct. Yeah, that's going to be super nice improvements to that area. And another sure. part of that was the pedestrian facilities along H Street, correct? The the to get the uh, sidewalks and everything up to up to snuff and everything. Yeah, the the south half of H Street um, currently has little or no development. It's all owned yeah. by Union Pacific, and so we we're, we're going to place sidewalk some fencing, some street lights, trees, to try to make this a beautiful, presentable project. I think it ex- essentially is, extends downtown. I mean, because now that you're going to have more of an inviting crossing, pedestrian crossing to get over, so you could park on Green Street, walk to the depot, walk across if you were heading to like West Lane Brewery or something. It's it's a lot more pedestrian friendly. So in my mind, it really extends downtown and that sort of welcoming ability for consumers and pedestrians to walk around and, and, and be able to visit the toy store and that kind of stuff a little bit easier than, than parking and driving, which they currently do now. Currently you look at it and it's not something that you would want to take your young kids across. Like, uh, are we, there's no sidewalks there. Are we supposed to be yeah. crossing here? And there is a mental barrier. Whereas if you present something psychologically to someone that says, okay, there's very specific handrails here to get you over the tracks and everything else, or to align you to get you over the tracks. It's something psychological that says, oh, this this is where we go. Right. This is where we're supposed to go. And and so we're, yeah, I mean. So it's not only does safety. it look better, but it functions more safe. Uh, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And so that's part of the intent. Super exciting for me because when I started at the city 15, 20 years ago, I, I started as the capital projects manager and I ha- held that position for several months. And we had just started the redevelopment agency funding for the downtown improvements and as Corey said, it's the natural progression of the growing the healthy downtown. So we're incorporating yet another street, several blocks. And again, it doesn't just look nice. It's not just frills. It's actually infrastructure. It's moving stormwater in the new curbs and gutters. It's providing uh, a place for pedestrians to walk on sidewalks. It's illuminating the lights with dark sky lighting, it's planting trees, it's allowing for further investment in our downtown for new business to come alongside us and really do well and live the American dream. It's it's super exciting think, for me. I think it's perfect timing too to be able to do this. I mean, during all the COVID-19 stuff to have a chance to really, I, I think this project sets up well for recovery. So uh, when the economy starts to bounce back, I mean, we've got all this stuff in place already for the business on the north side of uh, of the tracks at H Street and even downtown to kind of improve it while all this is going on, I think is super important that it does help lay part of the foundation for the recovery in the future. Yeah, absolutely. As you said, as you said about Tucker as being an entrance to the city, Mill Street is also an entrance mm-hmm. to the city. So we are trying to convey, a, you know, a safe corridor for people to to walk and be able to and it'll connect it all too because we've got those great medians on mill and the signage and the lights but then they end basically where h comes in and so to be able to get those all sort of flowing so it flows from the freeway to downtown i think is perfect because that entrance will be continuous and it's not just what the city is doing i'm not talking about city hall i'm talking about the residents the chamber Mm -hmm. of commerce main street to hatchapi those people are engaged at a level that matters, right? And all of us working together achieve greatness. And this is what's happening. You know, Tehachapi is a, is a shining star on top of the hill. And we don't say that in an arrogant way. We say that in, hey, we're open for business. You can live here. You can work here. You can visit here. You know, we, we like, we love people. And we want, we want good, positive people to come and, and join our club, if you will. So mm-hmm. really neat, exciting things. I can't believe how much I'm learning from this these this conversation so far. 
you know, talking about, the, you know, basically our carbon footprint and how we start to eliminate some of that. We start talking about the, the psychological aspect of an area where it, if it hasn't been maybe taken care of or it's left very raw, people have, you know, they, they put an image in their head. And here they're able to change that because we're showing what we're putting in care, some improvements, and then that changes their perception you know, just crossing over the tracks. Yeah, I mean, even the per- perception of walkability, right? Like, if you've got kids, you you don't want them jumping over tracks or anything else. You want a safe sidewalk to convey you. And, and I mean, it's that perception of the farmer's market faces that. Mm-hmm. You know, the farmer's market's directly adjacent to that. And so it's one of those, like, exactly the perception and the physical walkability of things is, is huge. There's a lot more that goes into these projects than sometimes I, I, I even allow myself to think about. <laughs> you know, so uh, it's in addition to the downtown project we were just talking about, we have uh, some additional sidewalks on the north side, right on what is it, Robinson Street and Mojave Ma- and Davis, I believe. Right. So going north south on the north side. So we have we have what seems like maybe one big project, but lots of different funding sources pulling together and improving our our areas that that need the most attention. Let's say. And then the investment comes along. So let's talk about the sidewalks on the north side. A little sure, bit. sure. That's north side sidewalks project uh, phase two. We're doing from H to I, I believe, mm-hmm. streets on Robinson, Davis, Mojave. Mm-hmm. We're doing sidewalks. They already have curb and gutter. And this project is funded through CDBG, which is Community Development Block Grant. We get an allocation every year, which is relatively small. So we group our, our allocations in every three-year allotments and do a sidewalk project in communities that need Yeah, and the CDBG funding can only be used in specific neighborhoods as well, correct? And this is one of those areas that, so if it seems like the north side's always getting that project, this is partially why. Correct. CDBG funds paid for the Pioneer Park design Mm -hmm. and construction several years ago. I remember Mayor Ed Grimes, God bless his soul, but he and I, and Dave James and Marcia Smith, a bunch of us that work for the city, we... We volunteered our time, and we actually designed and built along with some CDBG money. But And the community, my goodness, the community on the north side embraced that, and they help us uh, build that park. And that is a jewel in, in the north side. If you've never been to Pioneer Park, that is an, an amazing place. I know it's closed right now because of <laughs> COVID-19, unfortunately, but we hope to open that here real soon when things are healthier. But an amazing park. And I think that whole neighborhood, I mean, what we've done with the Neighborhood Improvement Project and what we're doing with the rail corridor to extend to H and get the downtown kind of expanding and then the more the pedestrian facilities, the sidewalks, it, it just reinvests in that neighborhood. And, and it's such, there are so many great homes there. It's our oldest residential neighborhood. There's some, but there's some great people living over, the, over there that are reinvesting in that neighborhood, their, their personal money and, and getting their houses up. I mean, we saw the increase in, in just building permits for patio covers and, and stucco and paint when we started the Neighborhood Improvement Project. I mean, neighbors came in here, started getting, getting permits to improve their homes, and you drive around now, you see a tangible difference. So these little projects, you add a sidewalk, that kind of stuff, man, they add up and make a big impact on a neighborhood. It matters. So what's next? Uh, Let's see what's next. We have a project coming up in front of Love's on Tehachapi Boulevard. We'll be repaving the number two lane, the truck lane, in front of Love's. It's it's in pretty rough shape, so Mm -hmm. we'll be repaving that this summer. We're also doing an enhanced pedestrian crossing project in front of Tompkins and Crossing Valley at Mill. That'll be some simple striping or crosswalks and some advanced signage, some flashing signs. So the repaving out at Love's, obviously that's that's beat up because of the... uh... The semi is coming and going, and we need to manage our asphalt. But let's talk a little more about the Tompkins project. So that's exciting. Tompkins is where I went to elementary school. It's up on Curry Street, and we continue to enhance that area for the safety of the the school kids, mm-hmm. the, the, the teachers, administration, and the people that live in and around that area. So I know on Pinion Street a couple of years ago, we enhanced the drop-off pickup. And on Curry, we put in a, a, uh, a crosswalk that was colored, stamped concrete. But now we're taking that to the next step. So we're going to have, what, push button yeah, so activated? Yep, they're the solar-powered push button activated crossing flashing light mm-hmm. signs. And then we're also doing some raised medians in the median of the road in the middle 
to provide the kids a safe refuge if they're after hours and the crossing guard doesn't happen to be present that that is protective for for pedestrians that's nice that's going to be so so much safer i know we i don't think we've ever had an issue up there god forbid but let's keep making those safety improvements and it looks nice right <laughs> again so it's a win-win for yep. everybody yeah it's one of those things too it's never a perfect science i mean school crossing school drop-off pickups i mean it's the probably the number one related traffic concern we have not right now presently but uh but normally during the school year well twice a day 15 minutes yes. of complete chaos right? <laughs> and it, we've yeah. got the 16 year old brand new driver that has to <laughs> right. run from school to school yeah. pick up the siblings because mom's waiting and got to do this and, and it's always that, poor but... tashby police's fault because they're know. never there when they really need them <laughs> yeah. you know because they're not sitting there waiting for somebody to go through a crosswalk or to not stop at the stop sign completely but it, these little things like you said even the median part uh there it just it slows people down it, the flashing sign registers in their mind better. So all these things have sort of a trickle down effect on improving the drop off, pickup, that kind of stuff. Come come school hours again. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're just trying to get the kids safely across the street. Yeah. And we're not making this stuff up as we go. But there are guidelines. There are rule books. Caltrans has a sure. rule book, right? Sure. That says you must do this. You can do this. You cannot do that. Yeah. Right. So you know, a lot of times we'll have an idea, or maybe a, a citizen will have a suggestion, and we love suggestions. Don't get me wrong. But we must use the rule book because we want to make sure that everybody is as safe as as can be. Absolutely. And we even, I think, even uh, th- there's even a little bit of science to this too. We pointed out the, I think, went back over the this past year at the League of California Cities. They had the cool like I thought they were cool. There were lights that like pop up in the in the crosswalks and they flash and then. We talked to someone, I think Andrew and I even talked about it, and they said, do you have snow plows? Because these aren't going to work very well because I won another city in California decided to put them in, and the first time they, they snow plowed, they ripped, they ripped. Well, That other city was Mammoth Lakes. I actually talked to their uh, city manager, and it, and it lasted about one snowstorm. Yeah, they're and fun. They look cool, and you, you can't really see them until you get really up on them. But yeah, the first time that snow plow goes over and the blade catches one of those housings, see you later. They work perfect in Huntington Beach, maybe, and, but not to hatch. Right, right. Right. Yeah. We get people that call for um, for uh, speed bumps. Yeah, they want to speed bump in their neighborhood because their neighbor is driving too fast. Well, it sounds good if you say it fast, but really at the end of the day, it's about long term maintenance and and the safety aspect of things. So we're always mm-hmm. considering new new projects or suggestions for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, we even just got through Public Works putting the bollards in, right on Green Street. That's mm-hmm. right. Another safety aspect. Absolutely. Um, you know that was. That's another important thing. I think one of the things that each of these projects that we've talked about are safety. Mm-hmm. That's the key word that, that translates into everything that we do is the public safety. What can we do to make our community just a little bit safer? And, you know, the, the bollards, I think that was a great idea. What's the definition of a bollard, Andrew? Can you tell <laughs> us that? I had somebody ask me that a couple of days ago, right? Well, it's a pipe that's in the ground, right? And it's going to protect pedestrians from cars right so it's a removable pipe yeah. that we put in green street at tehachapi boulevard a couple of them actually three pipes uh at touch boulevard on green street and then three more at f street so they're painted green they're nice and they look nice yeah. but they're to protect the pedestrians that are on green street walking around during farmer's market mm-hmm. during apple festival that kind of stuff there is security safety and security aspects so they're removable our public works will put them in of the event and then remove them after the event and uh, everyone is a little safe and they look so. better than just a road close sign or yeah. even some other things you can buy that look like you know it's it's protecting the white house you got this giant vehicle stopping thing it, it, it'll do the job but it looks kind of military so it's cool to have these they, they look a more welcoming and and again we'll do the job so right so don marsh and our public works department they designed and installed those just this last week so the first event We'll we'll install them, and you know downtown Tatchby is is really a great place to have uh, to have events. Andrew, anything else that you you want to touch base on? No, this is this has been amazing. Thank you so much, guys. And we would just really appreciate the fact that the amount of work that you put in, and like for me, you opened my eyes to some things that I don't even think about when I look at these projects. I look at them through you know my own set as the guy who uses them. Yeah. But here, when you start thinking about the concept of what we have to do in order to put a project forward there's more to it than just the fact that we've got to lay concrete or something like that we've we're changing people's perspectives on things you know we're changing the environment for the better where we're able to reduce 
the, the carbon. So, I mean, it's, it, these are things that I might not think about, but I'm, <laughs> it's for me, I think it's pretty cool that we've got someone like Andrew that's he can talk about it just yeah. as a part of his conversation. Just like I could talk about the the setup of our radio gear. I don't even want to talk about that, man. This thing, I'm, the brain power that required us to get this bad boy set up is amazing. Thank God there's no video. Exactly. Right? Oh my goodness. But I, will, you know, bring a, we have a, a solid. I mean, the engineering team that you pointed out, Key, is is solid. I mean, Andrews, a, a, J, Jay Schlosser, our, our city engineer and development services director, award winning state engineer of the year, civil engineer of the yeah. year, like, and they're and a great team that they've got set up. Yeah. I mean. If Jay Z award winning Michael Jordan, this is Scotty Pippen right here. You know, this is this is the Scotty Pippen of engineers in Andrew with the work he produces. And don't forget and Denise. That's all right. All the paperwork. Right. Oh my God. Because everybody's talking about that Michael Jordan couch. special. Oh. We might. Have, what would Denise be like? The, the the Horace Grant of this team? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's throwing back to the 1990 Bulls. Everyone's talking about the uh, Michael Jordan <laughs> last dance thing. So and, and Jason, our inspector too. I mean, oh, there right. you go. Okay. And Jason as yeah. well. Yeah, he's the uh, Ron Harper. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and talking about Denise, I, I, I this is part of the team that I, I think that's that to me is is amazing. Is she had a, a grant come back at like a ninety eight percent, yeah, and she was consumed with where did I miss two percent? She's mad with that two percent. <laughs> Where, where's that gap? How can I close that gap? Because yeah. there's no reason why it shouldn't be perfect. That's and why so, you had your outreach when she did the yeah. we want public input on projects because that was missing, and that's where the video series came in and all that good stuff. And we've mentioned this before, but we'll, we'll I'll say it again. We compete with other yeah. communities for this money. It's not a given. We must compete, and we must score high to be even considered. And uh, we have a really good track record yeah. on receiving grants. Also, before we go, I want to mention slow for the cone zone. That's Caltrans motto, if you will. But if you see uh, construction, if you see cones, if you see people, just slow down, you know, and let's let's make sure that everybody is working as safe as possible. The last thing we want is to have a to have an issue with uh, with the construction zone and and a safety issue. So I want to thank all of you for sitting in. I thought th this to me went to uh, like I said to new levels for me of opening my mind up when I start to look at some construction projects. And for those listening at home. If you have a thought or an idea that you'd like to share with us here, whether it's a subject for to hatch a pod or it's just a, something that we need to know here at City Hall, you can send us an email at media at tehatchapecityhall.com. And we just appreciate the fact you took the time to, to join us. So we'll catch you next time. Tehachapod is a conversation about Tehachapi designed for the people who live here or who would like to know more about this mountaintop community. If you have a question you would like answered, email media at tehachapicityhall.com. We will try to answer it on a future episode of Tehachapod.